Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I got a comment from one of you guys on my most recent video that says, Hey Naya, could you do a video on where your overall vision for your style and wardrobe is currently at? I've been following you for a long time and I still remember when the goal was to look like a rich tennis mom. Yeah, you've been here a while. So I'm just wondering how it's all progressed from your point of view with all the initial decluttering and rebuilding. And I thought this was such a, a thoughtful question. We really haven't touched on this for such a long time and it's, it's a perfect time for this video. So I'm in London right now. I don't have like the best setup so i thought i'd just like sit down on the ground i mean it's a good as a scenery as any to uh, sit down and just share my thoughts and feelings about this question you know when i started the channel in 2020 it was the very early stages of me decluttering and rebuilding my wardrobe at that point it was made up of a lot of fast fashion and i felt very style confused i had sort of like lost vision a little bit of like maybe what i like you know i was also just quite young so a lot of the time you had also just been like following trends to like a certain extent. I mean, I definitely did have like a sense of personal style, but yeah, at some point there was not a lot of things in my wardrobe that I liked. And so I started rebuilding it. I came out with all of my, you know, all the things that I preach about. And I mean, I preach about them because that's how I've been rebuilding my wardrobe. It's what works for me. And also the first year I did that, like for an entire year, I didn't buy anything from fast fashion. And then I did get into buying some fast fashion again after that. But I'm going to get into that a little bit later in this video because when I started this channel in 2020, yes, I was indeed talking about this uh, rich tennis mom aesthetic. And I think a lot of that comes from living in Switzerland. At that point, I've been living in Switzerland for two years. So it is just an aesthetic that you're presented with a lot. And then on top of that, my boyfriend at the time, his mom was someone that I was really inspired by and that I, I mean, still really admire and for many reasons liked her sense of style. Even though we would definitely differ in style, I really respected her style for what it was and something that I picked up on I mean this was true and for many things that she owned but specifically the bag that she had she had the Hermes Evelyn bag the one that I have now she had one on red and she also had one on brown and the red one was the one that I saw her with the majority of the time and she was just always wearing that bag and I remember once she told me like that she'd had it for 20 years and at the time like really seriously I had not considered uh, luxury items at all up until I met her and again I was just so taken with the fact that she'd had that bag for two decades and it still looked the way that it did so I had this idea that I wanted this exact bag as well so I did end up buying it uh, and I told myself you know if you have this for like a decade which seemed like a lot at the time but also doable I told myself if you have this for a decade then Honestly, it's worth all the money. And you know, at the time, a decade, a decade seemed like a long time, but now it's almost been four years. And you know, I've worn this bag like more than 400 times and it is indeed like, I do wear it all the time. A lot of my style now centers around this bag, but I will say that buying for a vision, because that was very much like the vision at the time. I think there's two things to that, which is that one, this type of like aesthetic has now become a lot more mainstream. I see it a lot more. It's called something like, you know, people call it like Birkin mom or like uh, Range, Range Rover mom or like Rover mom. And at the time when I sort of got into that style, it wasn't really a thing in that sense, or at least that was not something that I really was getting the vibe from. And now that it's become very mainstream, I do feel less like, attracted to it or like persuaded by it. I think that's one point because another part is just that, you know, when I was rebuilding my style from that vision a little bit, you know, instead of going off of exactly what I liked, which I learned, you know, with time, like, you know, building my wardrobe, I did start learning exactly like what I liked and not, and you know, uh, not that you don't make mistakes on top of that still, but whenever I would try to buy for that vision, every once in a while, it would be a miss because Yes, I like to lean on that vision. I like that aesthetic, but it's not purely who I am. You know, a really good example is I bought the blue dress from Ralph Lauren, the checkered one, because from my point of view, this was sort of like the perfect addition to an aesthetic like that. Like that is something that the woman I perceived in my mind would wear. But I never really got around to because even though it was part of this vision that I was building from, like that vision wasn't necessarily like 100% authentic to who I I actually am. So at the time I was definitely building my wardrobe out of a vision and I think that that makes so much sense before you have like developed your own 
both like taste and values when it comes to clothes like truly where at some point my own personal taste took over from the need to have like a vision for what my wardrobe needs to look like and i think in some sense i've started to like wake up to my own personal sense of style more and more you know i've also started to spend some more uh, time home back in denmark where our copenhagen where i'm originally from and for a long time i abandoned this scandy like cool girl aesthetic which is what i call it in order to find like a, a better sense of like base style and now i am starting to wear certain like elements of like the cool girl aesthetic again but it's done in a way more mindful way where like now I really feel like I have my base wardrobe down so well that I can start adding things on top of it. So abandoning that for a while was definitely not in vain. I really feel like that had to happen, but I am starting to incorporate some more scandy elements back into my style i mean it never really truly left i think there are so many things about my style that has been scandy this entire time but now i am starting to just take a little more more in of like who i originally am which is like a scandinavian person you know i i'm following the scandy trends a little bit more i you know make sure that i take a look at like uh, what what's a little bit of gani what's a, a little bit of rotate like danish uh, designers in in general not only and purely just i think you know it's so easy to follow a vision when you don't truly have like a personal sense of style but once you develop your own personal taste then that at least for me that is what i have been like buying from and i think that's been true for a while um not that i don't again like make mistake purchases but it really does become less and less so and some of the things that i've bought throughout the years you know are the things that i really continue to wear all the time and they have been picked like from my own taste that of course is stuff like the evelyn bag it is the curated coat the charcoal one then it is the type of boots that i wear then you know starting to get a lot of like denim basics back into my wardrobe and then usually just like a basic long sleeve black or white fitted top then there's something like you know the Ghani uh, leopard sweater which I think I've only worn it like 30 times but it is just like such a staple within my wardrobe and yeah a lot of the things I have now are things that I've had for even if it's not many years then at this point it's starting to become like years and I think that is sort of like the vision for my style is just staying authentic to my personal taste and also like the culture that I come from. Not that you can't like borrow from other cultures, you know, I'm also very interested in like UK fashion when I'm here, for example, or, you know, there are so many things of elements from style in Switzerland that has definitely become like integrated into my style. And I'm definitely so happy that that has, has happened. I think it's taken my style very far to sort of come to Switzerland and like where everything is a little bit more slowed down when it comes to fashion. And also, again, there's a lot of uh, emphasis on natural fibers and what fiber you're wearing, where in the UK, just honestly, I they, they are just, um, they are quite behind on that mindset compared to both the Swiss, but also the, the Scandies. So that's definitely not like, a, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to, I mean, that's just a, a, a truthful or an honest observation. But yes, so that is a little bit about my style and the vision on it. It's just like I said to follow my own taste and you know what I authentically like and incorporate these like cultural what could you say traits from like you know the Swiss and the Danes and also maybe a little bit the UK now that I'm spending a little bit more time here as well but there is like a huge thing to this that I definitely want to talk about you know I at this point I almost feel like I am a YouTuber you know at the very least I have like a YouTube channel and I know that the channel is, is only like at 22k but I've been doing this for a while and something that has been you know I started this journey because I really like doing this I do also like sharing I definitely doing this because I, I like it or I wouldn't be doing it but something that has taken me a little bit by surprise is the factor of like dealing with other people's like expectations of me and like what I do with my wardrobe I've actually found it a little bit difficult at times because like I just like I'm just still me I just make these videos you know and like it's very important in terms of like integrity to practice what you preach but I don't always you know and uh, yeah it's just um I have a couple of reasons for saying that and one of them is probably like the big one and that is when I started the channel you know I've sworn fast fashion off for a while I remember thinking that that was going to 
be forever. And when I say fast fashion, I mean stuff like Sarah, H&M, Bershka. I mean, I've never bought anything from Bershka, but it's a good example. You know, Primark would also be an example now that I'm here in the UK. And I, it lasted for a year. And then what happened was that I found this shirt in store. It was this baby blue. I mean, I'll pop a picture up so you can see it. And I thought it was so beautiful. I really wanted it. And I actually debated it for a bit. It didn't really cost a lot. And it would have been sort of, I want to say like innocent to just get this tub and then go about my life. So I did end up making the decision of buying this tub from H&M. And then it was sort of almost as if like the diet was broken, like almost in a sense where like you have one cookie and then because you already had the cookie, you eat the rest. That was how it felt a little bit for me and this tub from H&M. And then, you know, I don't know, I, I like my audience a lot, but that's again this thing where like there are a lot of people watching and some people were very disappointed in the fact that I bought this tub and I wasn't necessarily super like happy with it either myself and I felt it was a very complicated uh, process to go through honestly and it was easier to then just be like you know what screw that and then go about buying fast fashion because Sometimes it's really difficult to continuous, uh, continuously making like the hard choice. Uh, and yeah, I've been buying fast fashion for a while now. Again, I've been trying to do it a little bit more mindfully, but then every once in a while, you know, it's, it's hard to do something like that mindfully, which it's probably something that you shouldn't be doing much of uh, to, to begin with at all. And um, yeah, it's something that I've been really struggling with this thing where like I do this for me, but then other people like it will impact how you feel about what I'm what I'm doing. And yeah, it, it makes it, it just makes it. My vision for the channel, uh, like my vision for my wardrobe is actually to go back to not buying any fast fashion at all, maybe do something like say I'll do another year because I think doing like it in bits might be better because because the last time I really thought I would never buy any fast fashion again and it would have probably honestly been better for my wardrobe if I hadn't but it doesn't make it easy but this time it's more difficult to say it out loud because yeah there are people watching and it's not easy yeah disappointing yourself to begin with and then yeah it's just something that I've dealt with this fact that you know, I'm already doing this for me, but then there is this added layer of, you know, other people watching. I've found it like such a disconnect from the, the relationship I actually have to my, to my wardrobe. So yeah, that is actually sort of like my vision for my style going forward. Going back to not buying any fast fashion and then see where that goes. It is difficult in some ways. It is pretty taxing. Like there are some things which are just more read readily available at fast fashion, which makes it so much easier to manage your wardrobe. But you know, I will still, even though there are also people who have opinions about that, but honestly, I don't care about that. Like, I will still be buying things from Arcad and other stories. You know, these higher end brands, which comes from the same groups, because I've just found the experience having that clothes in my wardrobe completely different, where every time I buy something fast fashion, almost all of the time it pollutes my wardrobe. But then on top of that, there's also something that's a little bit difficult about it, which is that I do have some pieces from fast fashion that I truly treasure. Actually, what comes to mind is the three things I bought when I was in the UK the last time, which is my Sarah denim skirt, my Sarah brown jacket, and then also my black jacket from Sarah. Then there's also my H&M denim jacket, the dark one. I'm trying to think if there's anything else, but if nothing else, there are these four pieces that I truly just like love and treasure within my wardrobe. I mean, the brown jacket, you know, had I not bought that, I might have found, found something similar later down the road and, you know, I would have lived without these pieces, you know, my wardrobe would have survived, but I do truly treasure them, which is why it's so difficult to, I don't know if that's the only reason why, but that's definitely something I take into account of like, continue to build on my wardrobe. Like, do I really want to make this statement that I don't want to buy any fast fashion at all anymore and then knowing that I'm not just like internally dealing with like my uh, decision and opinions but that every time I share something there's like an added layer of having the, the channel I, I found it I find it difficult I just do but that has also gone better it's something that I'm continuously working on yeah so I don't want to make any like ultimate statement right now I think you know those of you who watch this video are probably the ones who are interested in the journey that my wardrobe has taken uh, so you know I know it's most likely most of the time a specific audience that watches videos like this one to the end i mean there are also those who really have opinions <laughs> and i mean you all do and you're all entitled to your opinions it's not like you know you can't agree with anyone or everyone and that's also just gonna be the case for this channel it's just something like it's never gonna go away it comes with the with the territory i'm, I'm well aware but 
but in terms of dust just like if i just put that aside for the moment like you know other people's expectations or like making a statement and speak of it purely from a wardrobe perspective it really does elevate your style so much when the majority of what you own come from things that aren't fast fashion like you know you will be able to find the occasional piece which lasts or which is really well made or it won't be like a, a clear giveaway that it comes from fast fashion but most of the time like that won't be the case and unless you've gotten really really good at assessing these things and picking solely with your personal style it's just not the best place to go back and keep buying things for your wardrobe honestly and the things that make up my wardrobe now which i am very happy with are all almost exclusively all pieces which are more i'm actually coming up with a video where i talk about how to be stylish wearing fast fashion and one of the things i will be mentioning is like when you buy one of these things from like h&m and sarah which is so obvious that they're h&m and sarah where if you can you know care a little bit about your style and looking for the right thing like beyond that then you'll be able to find some very in interesting pieces um like one thing i just bought i'll be talking about in the next wardrobe updates is a blazer from odd muse i'll be popping the picture up uh, here honestly this could also be because i'm living in switzerland but like i paid 145 pounds for it it's like nearly the price and the actual price of some blazers in zara yes this one is also polyester yeah i'll go into again odd muse more in another video as well but this blazer really has such a nice structure to it it does have a, a couple of like twists to it which makes it like unique and it gives your look something different than if you're just purely buying things from the the fast fashion store so i mean you know me when i talk i just talk and talk and talk but this is what the, is on the agenda for my personal style is just continue to wear the things that i like buy with my own taste and with a like reintroduction to some of the skinny things that i have left behind before and then continuously to the extent that i want to and that i can like buy pieces that are like more unique uh, and even if they they are also a little bit more expensive as well and then just because i am in the uk just maybe add this as well something i find is really interesting is that at least i have like the luxury of having some outfit formulas that i have developed you know wearing like a simple black top like with a denim skirt or with the black skirt you know i'll wear my coat and i'll wear the boots i mean saying that is almost pointless because you guys have seen my outfit formulas so many times it's no secret how i like to dress as like a base and here where i'm staying in london this is actually a the apartment of a friend that i made the last time i was here and she's abroad right now and i helped her pack and she had like overpacked she couldn't fit it all into like the the carry-on suitcase and i was like well you know let's think about what you're actually gonna wear like maybe you'll wear uh, this dress like the leopard dress that you just bought that you really like maybe you'll wear that you know two to three days and she looked at me and she was like yeah that's not gonna happen i will wear this once at maximum because uh, and then also her bringing bikinis like she brought like four or five where i would have brought one to at best because uk culture there's a lot of like newness to it where uh, with my culture at least or scanny culture or also swiss culture at least that's not the case you can wear the same outfit many many times and it would never be like not remembered but like frowned upon it would never be looked at in like a bad way to to wear the same things many times and uh, like for me it's like that's a that's a luxury it's so nice to be able to address the same way a lot so that whatever i add on top of that like really give something to it and then be more mindful about like what i wear because if you are stuck in a like cycle or a culture of needing to reinvent the wheel every time you need to to wear an outfit my god it is so difficult to develop a true sense of personal style and also it's so expensive so no wonder that you know that you you buy a lot of stuff from fast fashion and seeing that i don't have that then it should also be easier for me to not do that i think that's what i have for, to say for now please share in the comments below this is definitely a video where i want to hear your thoughts and feelings and opinions and yeah i'm just getting back into to posting you know and coming to this term these terms of like yes i want to be transparent when i can but also just remember that first and foremost like i just share what i want and then yeah i you know i honestly don't know how else to say it so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.